Hi guys, here's your lesson on solving logarithmic equations, just in case you need to see it again. So we have two different variations of a logarithmic equation. You have when you have a logarithm equals a number, or for this next one, when you have a logarithm equals a logarithm. So we'll go back to the one for a log equals a number. When you have that scenario, what you want to do is you want to change to an exponential function. Actually, equation, I should say equation, not function. Okay, so we're going to change this to an exponential equation. So I have 2, or sorry, 6 squared equals x. And then it's easy peasy. 6 squared is 36. So x equals 36. And then for letter B, I have 8 to the 4 thirds equals x. So you get x equals, I'm going to use my calculator, 8 to the 4 thirds is 16. So again, if you ever have a log equals a number, you always want to change it to exponential form. Our other scenario is when you have a log equals a log. Now having a log equals a log is the same thing as having the same bases when you solve exponential equations. So what you're going to do is you are going to drop your logs. So since you have the same base for your logarithm on both sides, it makes sense that what's inside the logarithm has to be the same. So now we can set these equal to each other. So I have 5 equals 2x minus 7, and then continue to solve. Add 7 to both sides, you get 12 equals 2x, so you get x equals 6. Now with logarithmic equations, you always want to double check your answers, especially when you have a variable inside your logarithm, so this right here. So I need to take my 6 and plug it in. So I have 2 times 6 uh, minus 7. So 2 times 6 is 12 minus 7 is 5. Um, so what you're checking for is you're making sure that this number, when you evaluate it, is positive because you cannot take the logarithm of a negative number. So in this case, it checks out, so your answer for this is 6. For letter B, um, we have the same logs of the same bases on both sides, so we can go ahead and drop the logs. So you get x squared equals 4x minus 3. Now we do have a quadratic function, which means you can solve either by factoring or by using the quadratic formula. I'm going to solve by factoring, so I'm going to get it equal to zero. So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to take both of these terms and move it to the other side. When I do that, they change signs, so that's x squared minus 4x plus 3 equals zero. Um, so two numbers that multiply to 3 and add to negative 4 are negative 3 and negative 1 equals 0. So for this first one, I get x equals 3. And for the second one, I get x equals 1. And once again, you always want to take what you have and double check it. So I'm going to take it and plug it into um, what's inside my logarithm because it always has to be positive. So if I take 3 and square it, that gives me a positive 9, so we're good on that. If I take 1 and square it, positive 1, so we're good on that. Double check the other side. So 4 times 1 is 4, minus 3 is 1. If I take 3, plug it in, 4 times 3 is 12, uh, minus 3 is 9. All of those numbers were positive, which means these are solutions. Um, for this last portion, if you ever have logarithms that are separated, where you don't have a log equals a number or a log equals another log, what we need to do is we need to condense them using the properties. So we have this 2 in front of your log. That can be brought up as an exponent. So what we have is log base 2 of x squared minus log base 2 of 5 equals log base 2 of 125. 
we still need to condense what's on this side because we still have our logs separated. So since I'm subtracting my logarithms, when I condense, I got a little ahead of myself, this is log base two, when I condense, I'm condensing with division since we were subtracting the logs. Now that we have logs on both sides, you can go ahead and drop the logs. So you get x squared over five equals 125. I'm going to multiply both sides by 5, so I get x squared equals 625. I'm going to take the square root, so I get x equals positive 25 and negative 25, because whenever you take the square root, you always have plus or minus on your answer. Now if I were to go back and check this, so I take positive 25, put it in for x, that's just going to be log base 2 of 25, which is positive, so that's good. If I take the negative 25 and put it in for x, that means I'm taking the logarithm of a negative number. So that negative 25 does not actually work. So your solution for this is only x equals 25. For letter B, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to condense it using the properties. Since we are adding, when I condense, I'm going to condense with multiplication. So I'm taking x times x minus 12 equals 2. Now I have a logarithm equals a number, so that means you need to change it to exponential form. So that gives you 8 squared equals, and I'm going to go ahead and distribute this, x squared minus 12x. Well, 8 squared is 64 equals x squared minus 12x. Again, it's a quadratic, so I'm going to get it equal to 0. So I have x squared minus 12x minus 64. I'm going to go ahead and factor it. So two numbers that multiply to negative 64 and add to negative 12 are negative 16 and positive 4. So my first solution is a positive 16 and my second solution is a negative 4. Now when we check it, if I take 16, put it into that log, inside the logarithm is positive, so we're good with that. If I take 16 and put it into this log, 16 minus 12 is a positive 4, so we're good. So 16 works. But if I take negative 4, and plug it in, inside the logarithm is negative. So this one does not work. So your only solution is 16. Okay, last one. Um, again, we need to condense using the properties. So I have this one half sitting in front of my logarithm. I can bring that up as an exponent. So I have log base three of 81 to the 1 half minus log base 3 of x minus 1 equals 2. 81 to the 1 half is the same thing as taking the square root of 81, which is 9, minus log base 3 of x minus 1 equals 2. Now since I am subtracting my logarithms when I condense it, I can condense it with division. So this is log base 3 of 9 over x minus 1 equals 2. Now I have a log equals a number, which means you want to change to exponential form. So that's 3 squared equals 9 over x minus 1. I'm going to continue this over here since I ran out of space. So I have 9 equals 9 over x minus 1. Um, this I'm going to go ahead and cross multiply, so I'm going to multiply those two since we have a ratio. So I have 9 times x minus 1 equals 9, distributes 9x minus 9 equals 9, it's a lot of 9's. Add 9 to both sides, you get 9x equals 18, divide by 9, and you get x equals 2. And once again, double check it, so if I take 2, put it into my logarithm, 2 minus 1 is 1, so what's inside the logarithm is positive, so it checks out. So your solution for this is x equals 2. Alright, that's it for this lesson. Have a good day!